Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I just want to quickly share with you a video that was in my email that, um, well, I had gotten a couple, actually. Well, one was a comment, is in the comments, and one, uh, there's several videos that are listed in my emails. I'm trying to get through them before I want to get off of here and pray. But anyway, this is still Wednesday, January 29th, and it's now 8.50 p.m. already. This particular video is called Cover Up Alert. Doctor told what not to do and told me expect this if it gets widespread. <clears throat> All right, this gentleman, his channel is, excuse me, JWTV. All right, um, from what he says, I believe he's a uh, Christian. Um, oh, it says JWTV, JW. That could be his initials. I don't know. Uh, the point is, he had a doctor scheduled to come on his program. She's got a Facebook page. I guess they connected through that. I don't know. But she gives advice, things to do, things not to do, what have you. Well, this coronavirus thing comes up, right? And everybody's talking about it. And he wanted to bring her on his show to get her take on it. And she was warned not to go on there. So all she could do is send him a text. And he reads the text. And then she says, and I won't be contacting you any further about this. Okay, now bear with me a minute. I'm not sure exactly what point it talks. How you doing uh, today? I want to get. I'm going to try to. Well, we know how great essential oils is, but. So I want to give you this information. I got the message right here. Okay, he's very And she confused. literally says at the end of it, I will not contact you again about this. God bless you. So, yes, it's that serious at this point. And you know, all throughout history and all throughout the times, all the doctors that end up missing. So we're not going to mention names, but we are going to give you this information here right now. So I'm going to read this to you. It says, so very sorry. For some reason, I never saw this reply. And yeah, she tunes into the show every now and then when she's available. I usually can't make your live shows anyway. An update, though. I heard on mainstream news yesterday, 128, that people need to watch out for fake remedies like essential oils. So that's the media right there promoting their agenda. When we know how great essential oils is. But Did you get that? They're already warning you to look out for fake cures like essential oils. <clears throat> All right, I'll let him continue. She says uh, that people need to watch out for fake remedies, the mainstream media said. She said, and I thought, hmm, how are essential oils a problem since they have generations of books knowledge about their properties? I have posted 122 and 23 on two different Facebook pages. Some suggestions for any outbreak, plus this outbreak specifically, she's talking about what we're having right now that they brought in people for. And she says, and it included essential oils. That's what she put on her Facebook. I got a call and email today uh, from doTERRA, one of the brands I ordered mine from, telling me they did a search for the current virus and essential oils, found me, and wanted me to edit or delete any postings. She said, what the F? I am a doctor and can suggest things and essential oils. Uh, she says, have been studied for centuries. They go all the way back to the Egyptians at least. And they themselves have been marketing them to people as having antiviral and antiseptic properties. So they gave me a cover your ass warning to take them down. And you know, Big Pharma, Big Tech are already working online and say, shut up. Take that down. Uh, if you talk about bad about the vaccine, because of course Johnson and Johnson's coming out with the vax. Remember? The okay, so this doctor was told by her own supplier of essential oils to what he said, CYA, by taking that down. Take that down, lest it get you into trouble. 
because apparently they're being told don't be trying to sell these essential oils as a possible way to keep from getting stuff. Well, uh, we know, uh, okay, that's one thing. I'm going to link this video. You can watch the rest of it. It's only nine minutes in all and six seconds. All right, now, going back to my comments, I wanted to tell you, if you don't read the comments yourself, um, from Aubrey McCloskey, who had shared with us about, we were praying for her and her husband getting ill, and her daughter having the spirit of fear. Okay, well, this same lady, let me pull up these, um, she said two hours ago, uh, hi, Jeannie, I just wanted to tell you I think I'm un I'm starting to understand the pattern that God has been showing me. Now, this is under my video that I just put up about Trump to put prayers back in schools. Prayers to whom? That was my title. Okay, then I put for a couple of months now, or this is Aubrey talking, he has been showing me stuff that has to do with disease, and it was freaking me out. Because I was taking it personally. But then all of a sudden we have this coronavirus. What I am being shown now are the numbers 38 and 39 together for the war of Gog and Magog. The Lord is walking me through stuff, it seems, before it happens. Anytime he has something judgmental or negative to say or show me, I am learning it's not all about me. It's about what's to come on to the world. Hallelujah. Take what I said to the Lord if you need to. He shows me Jeremiah 1 5 a lot. Okay, I meant to look that up. Let's look that up right now. Jeremiah 1 5. Because I was going to look that up earlier and I forgot. I try to get through those comments and then go back and pick those things up and look them up and then I forgot. All right. Jeremiah 1 5 before I formed thee in the belly I knew thee before thou camest forth out of the womb I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations so the Lord knew us before we were formed in our parents mother's womb that is an excellent Bible uh, scripture to remind us just how much he knows us. Uh, of course, he's speaking to Jeremiah to say, I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Not all of us have been ordained as prophets unto the nations. He may use us as a messenger now and then to give us the message, but I think being ordained a prophet is a higher calling. Okay, so anyway... She tells me that, and then I said, um, thank you for sharing this with us, Aubrey. That is awesome. Can you share what the Lord has shown you about disease? Is it anything, pre is there, I meant, is there anything preventative? Things to take or not eat, etc. She said, he hasn't said much pertaining to it because I'm still in the process of figuring out the number sequences he gives me asking him for answers through the Bible at the right times I'm still being shaped and fine-tuned but it feels like a switch has flipped today he did however sorry I must have a hair stuck to me I keep feeling it he did however speak to me about my health and he told me I need to watch what I eat for my health and to be a clean vessel. If I start to reach for anything unhealthy, I feel convicted. And if I start to put too much cheese on something, I hear not too much. I've been through that. Come to find out my triglycerides are a little high. I did that keto diet and that diet caused it. Is that that where you eat all kind of protein and not enough carbs so you get ketoacidosis? Yeah, you lose weight all right, but it's it's not healthy to do it for long periods of time. All right. Um, 
I was directed by the Lord to just eat clean, whole foods. Well, that can be really hard to do. Clean, whole foods. That sounds to me like a, a meat or a fish, whole food. Fruits and vegetables not processed in a can or packaged up in a mix. Like where all you do is dump in some butter and milk and mix it up and you've got a meal kind of thing. Those are not whole foods. I'll have to look into that more. But I think that's what it means. Uh, lots of water and vitamins. All right, so if y'all haven't yet, please, please, please add vitamin C to your diets. It will not hurt you to take it. I'm taking 2,500 milligrams a day right now. All right. Uh, then she, I, she said, also after I typed that message about Gog and Magog, I was led to Jeremiah 48, the judgment of Moab, that is modern-day Jordan. That is, after I asked the Lord, what's next? Looks like Jordan will face judgment, and it will lead to them turning away from their idols. Okay, I'm getting to a, a, another point here about the coronavirus. All right, he started showing me disease before this coronavirus hit. And then she said, oh, everyone should read Psalm 91 every day. That's your preventative. Because I had asked earlier, did he give you anything that's a preventative for this? So it's eating, eating well, eating as whole as possible, whole foods, as clean as possible, add vitamins, anything to boost your immune system. You can do a simple search. How do we boost our immune system? It'll, if you want to get it through foods, you have to eat a lot of them to, to get 2,500 milligrams of vitamin C. I take 1,000 in the morning, 500 in the afternoon, 1,000 at night right now to try to get over all this, what's going on, and I may just continue. Okay, so um, I told her... Um, Okay, thank you. I totally agree about Psalm 91. I've been trying to remember to mention that in my videos. I know that if people will learn this psalm and believe it and trust that it is true, they will not get sick. In that psalm it says, No plague or pestilence shall enter into my tent. You declare that every night. You declare Psalm 91 over yourself and over your household every single night. Okay, people? All right, so that's what I wanted to mention through that. That was God's preventative. And this man's talking about using essential oils. Now, I don't, he, uh, later on in here, he mentions peppermint, um, which someone told me about. When I was sick with all this, and I've been putting this, well, this is old bus that someone told me about, but I think I'm out of it. And I didn't, I wasn't sure what to order. I have this little diffuser right here beside me, and um, I know some people are against it, and I really still don't understand why, how it could be wrong for a Christian to use a natural remedy. What's the, you know, what's the harm if we take CBD oil or black seed oil or um, moringa, uh, which is a natural food product that's grown and the leaves are dried and crushed and put into capsules, or you can get them in tea bags to make moringa tea to increase your energy. See, there's so many natural products out there that we could take and use to increase our immune systems. But uh, you, you don't want to just buy anything everybody recommends. You, you want to do your own research. Unless you've got unlimited resource of money and you can afford to buy everything on the market, that, that'd be wonderful. 
But if you got a limited amount, you want to be buying the right things, high enough quality to do you some good. And I would think most vitamin C products are. Um, the doctors put on my paperwork when they discharged me to get chewable vitamin C. I'm not real sure why, because I never did put that I take chewable. But, uh... So I don't know if that was a recommendation or a mistake, but I always just buy the regular vitamin C. They're sour if you suck on them. They're real sour. But I just swallow them whole. And just do what you can to increase your immune system. Stay out of crowds. And, and do Psalm 91 every single night. So I'm going to end this here by pleading the blood of Jesus Christ in Nazareth over each and every one of you and over myself and over our households and over our pets. We don't know what, if they can get it. I mean, if it can transfer from a, a pig to a person, I don't know about to an animal, a dog or a cat, but I plead the blood of Jesus over my dog every night anyway for anything that a dog can get or or so a demon can't enter them. Because you know those demons just went straight into that herd of swine. And then they went crazy and ran over the cliff. So, you know, there's biblical proof that demons can enter your animals. So I plead the blood of Jesus over all of, all of y'all's animals. Any animals you're raising or any pets in your home. You should do the same. We all should be doing this. Pleading the blood of Jesus over yourselves, over your arm. I pleaded over my armor because I don't take it off. I can't imagine a Christian taking off the armor. You're, if you've accepted Jesus as your Savior, you're on the way to salvation. So you have the helmet of salvation, do you not? So I plead the blood of Jesus over my helmet of salvation, over my breastplate of righteousness, over my belt of truth, and on down over my shoes of peace. And I take up my shield of faith so I can extinguish the fiery darts of the enemy. And then I take up my sword, which is the very word of God, quick to divide the lies from the truth, just like bone from marrow. Having done that, I will stand ready to do battle in the day of evil. And I will pray in the Spirit at all times with all manners of prayers and petitions for all the saints. And I could do more of that. I forget to. But whenever I remember. I start praying in the spirit. For whoever God has put on my heart. Right at that moment. And that's why it is so wonderful. To have that gift. So just keep asking. If you don't have it yet. Okay. Alright. So we've covered. Covering yourselves with the blood. Cover your home and everything you own. Especially electronics and mirrors. I don't know how demons come through mirrors. I don't know how they come through your TV set. I just plead the blood of Jesus over them. Just in case. Supposedly they can come through your computer. Depending on what you're watching. What is your eye gate watching? Be careful about that. Alright. Let's see what else. You plead the blood. Go through Ephesians chapter 6. If you don't know about the armor of God yet. Or you know about it. But you don't know it in order I don't have it in order I just go from head to toe I don't do it in the order that's in the Bible you can do it from right out of the Bible memorize it straight from how the scripture says it but that that is not that's just not how I learned it it was easier for me to remember from head to toe and then the rest of it so anyway do it however is best for you then when you're done doing your spiritual warfare, pleading your blood over your property, asking Jesus to keep a hedge of protection all the way around your property made up of the warrior angels, and then say, Father, please let me have that extra hedge of protection around the outside of the angels made up of that wall of Holy Spirit fire from heaven. Protect us, Lord, encapsulate me, our home, our property, our angels with a capsule of Holy Spirit fire from heaven. And please keep us covered under the shadow of your wings as it says in Psalm 91. And then I go into reciting Psalm 91. 
Uh, some nights I'm so tired, all I can remember is about seven, eight verses. But if I do at least that, and I know God knows my heart, I've, you know, I'm just give out. That's all I can say. If I want to, I'll open up my computer and it's on my desktop. I can click it open and just read it right off. That helps me to keep it memorized. So you do it however is best for you. If you can put a, a note, if you have a notepad app, what, whatever, to put it on your desktop where you can just click it open real quick or just use your Bible. Some people prefer the paper of the Bible. That's fine too. So however is best for you, you learn Psalm 91 and you stand on it. That he who dwells in the shelter of the Almighty, in fact, let's read it right now. Let's just read it right now and let you see how great Psalm 91 is for those who don't yet. And most of you, I think probably most of you do, but I still want to read it. It wouldn't hurt, right? Never hurts. All right, so I'm going to go to the NASB. I know you'll have your own favorite versions. It's titled, The Security of the One Who Trusts in the Lord. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, quote, My refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, unquote. For it is he who delivers you from the snare of the trapper and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, which are feathers, the feathers on his wings. And under his wings you may seek refuge. And I do like that over myself. His faithfulness is a shield and a bulwark. A bulwark is a protecting wall. You will not, I say, I will not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, or of the pestilence that stalks in the darkness. That's any kind of critter or plague. A pestilence can be, here, I'll look it up. Pestilence can be, uh, it's number 1698, and it's in the sense of destroying. All right, so it's a masculine noun. It means pestilence or plague, murane, cattle disease, cattle plague. Um, but see, a pestilence can also be like roaches and rats, pestilence. And they carry diseases. So you don't want them coming in either. Okay? So that's why you stake your claim on Psalm 91. And if you have any signs or symptoms of mice or roaches, get rid of them. Okay. So let me go back. Any kind of pest like that. That's where they get their name. Pestilence. From the word pestilence. Okay, I will not be afraid of the pestilence that stalks in darkness or of the destruction that lays waste at noon. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not approach you. You will only look on with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. The recompense is a reward or, or uh, actually it's to be like the discipline or destruction of the wicked it's not really a reward it's, it's their recompense it's what they're getting for being wicked for you have made the Lord my refuge even the most high your dwelling place see like I said I change that to I and mine for I have made you, O Lord, my refuge, even the Most High, my dwelling place. That's how I typed it up. So when I say it, I make it personal to me.
you can do it how you want. No evil will befall you, nor will any plague come near your tent. Now the footnote on tent is dwelling. So that's your house. Whatever you live in right now. For he will give his angels charge concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will bear you up in their hands that you do not strike your foot against a stone. That's God's protection. His, he sends his angels to help protect us. That's why I ask him when I pray, please let guardian angels stay in their homes and let warrior angels, I ask him for that hedge of protection all the way around the perimeter of your properties made up of the warrior angels. And for them to walk the halls day and night in multifamily dwellings. You will tread upon the lion and cobra. The young lion and the serpent you will trample down. Now I just think we're in our glorified bodies by this time. This I just think this this uh, psalm is, is was probably for them then. And is for us now, but also some of this could pertain to when we come back in our glorified body. But anyway, moving on, verse 14. Because he has loved me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him securely on high, because he has known my name. That, of course, is the Lord talking. He will call upon me. And I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With a long life, I will satisfy him and let him see my salvation. End quote. It starts being quoted in verse 14. Because he has loved me, capital M, Therefore, I will deliver him. Can you believe that? I will set him securely on high. Where would that be? Up in heaven. Why? Because he has known my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. The footnote says, or distress. I will rescue him and honor him with a long life, literally length of days. I will satisfy him and let him see or cause him to feast his eyes on my salvation. You see, the word salvation in the Old Testament is always Hebrews number 3444 4, 4, and it means Yeshua. So we actually get our salvation when we get there. You see that? And that's just one place where that's at. It's in many, many places in the Old Testament. If you do this, then I'll do that. If you obey me, then I'll take care of you. You see, I pray that everybody who hears this will understand that and realize it takes commitment and obedience, belief and trust in the Lord to obtain his salvation. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth over this video and over my computer, myself, and each and every one of you, your devices, and your internet connections. I pray that we can stay connected until we get to go be with our Lord Jesus forever and ever and ever. Amen. You stand on the promises of God and don't waver. 
for a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. That's a scripture. Don't believe it or kind of sort of believe it or want to hope you believe it or I think I believe it. I guess I believe it. Believe it. This is a psalm you can stand on. And however things turn out, if you trust in the Lord with all your heart and you lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, he will direct your paths. He will tell you what to buy, to eat, and not to buy. If you're willing to listen, he will tell you what things to buy. If you've only got $10 or 20 or whatever it is, and you can only buy one thing, let it be vitamin C. Take it to the Lord, but, but be diligent about how you choose to be proactive and staying well, and for your preventative medicine, learn this psalm and say it every night and believe it. So in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. That's Proverbs 3, chapter, uh, verses 5 and 6. And with that, I'll say bye for now. I will talk to you later. God bless each and every one of you. Good night for now. Or, or good day, whenever you see this. Bye-bye.